Hello, it's me again, Dr. Babatunde Okewale. Today I'll be talking about the 15 causes of male infertility. Now, let me quickly define what infertility is. Infertility is the inability of a couple to achieve pregnancy after trying for one year with unprotected regular intercourse. What it means is, if any new couple comes to you and say we've been trying to get pregnant and it's not up to one year, especially if the woman is less than 35 years old, you cannot label them as being infertile. So we're going strictly by that definition. Again, straight away, it is obvious that infertility is a couple's problem. In fact, it's the only disease in the whole world that affects two people at a time. If you have hypertension, it's a singular problem. Only one person has it. But in infertility, it's a couple problem. And it's been found out that up to 50% of causes of infertility is due to men, is due to the male factor. The unfortunate thing is a lot of men are in denial. And they are in denial because sometimes they equate good erection and being very good in sex to fertility. They are two different things. Having an erection, being good in bed is different from being infertile. And a lot of men and the society at large put all the fault on the head of the woman. So that's um, by the way. So we go straight away to the 15 causes of male infertility. The number one cause is infection. When we talk about infection, we're talking about sexually transmitted infections. And the number one culprit worldwide and in, even in our environment are chlamydia and gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, everybody knows about. It's been an ancient um, sexually transmitted disease. And there are different antibiotics that have been used to treat gonorrhea. But the second one called chlamydia is a silent destroyer. Sometimes it does not have any symptom and before you know it, it has destroyed the testicular tissues in the men. So that's the number one cause. So when we advise men, especially when they are not with their partners or they are still single to use condom, there is a reason behind it. Infection is the number one cause of male infertility. Number two is testicular heat. The testes hate heat. Simple. And that is why God has made it in such a way that the testicle is outside of the body, inside the scrotum. Compared to the ovary, which is the comparative organ in a woman, the ovary is inside the woman where there's a lot of heat because it loves heat. But the testes hate heat and that is why it is outside of the body. So anything that would increase testicular heat can cause infertility. It can cause low sperm count. Whether you are wearing a very tight clothing, I know a lot of men do, especially our young boys, they love skinny jeans and the rest. Those kind of clothings generate heat in the testes and they can result in low sperm count. Excessive bicycling generates heat in the testes and it can result in low sperm count. So men love the spa, sitting inside hot water tubes, you know, for bath, it is not too good as well. Then we have a lot of transporters in Nigeria that travel long distance, sitting on the same spot, especially in those old buses that have the engine right below the seat of the driver. Those things generate heat and they could cause 
reduced sperm count and male infertility. So the sperm or the testes hate heat. That's number two. Number three is cigarette smoking. It's a lifestyle thing. Excessive cigarette smoking, especially above 20 cigarettes per day, has been found to reduce the sperm count and the sperm motility. So if you're trying to maintain your fertility as a man, then try and stop smoking. If you can't try, reduce the amount of smoking um, um, cigarettes that you take a day. Number four, strangely, is what I call frequent sex. Spams are stored in the testes and there's a law of demand and supply. It's been found that men who ejaculate more than two to three times per day tend to have low sperm count. If you're trying to get pregnant, the best way to go about having sex is at least two to three times a week, not a situation of every day, and not only every day, ejaculating two to three times per day by whatever means. It reduces the sperm count. Number five is alcohol abuse, excessive alcohol. It reduces the count. It reduces the male hormone called testosterone. And it has a direct effect on erection. If you can't have an erection and you can't make love, then infertility will come about. We're still talking about 15 causes of male infertility. Number six is illegal drug use. When I talk about illegal drug use, we're talking about the hard drug, it can be marijuana, which can be cocaine, heroin. Those ones are on one side. They do reduce sperm count and they do affect erection. On the other side are men who want to have six packs, who are obsessed with the gym and they go on anabolic steroid. Anabolic steroid destroys the testes and it reduces sperm count. So both of them are illegal drug use. Number seven is what we call retrograde ejaculation. Normally when a man ejaculates, the ejaculate should come forward, outside, inside the vagina. But in retrograde ejaculation, the man reaches an orgasm, no sperm comes out, the sperm goes backward into the bladder and that is where it is deposited. Retrograde ejaculation occurs in certain disease processes especially in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or in men who suffer from multiple sclerosis or who have had injury to their spinal cord. We're still talking about 15 causes of male infertility. Number eight is stress. A lot of people know the kind of stress that we go through day in, day out in our various urban cities. What stress does is it brings about fatigue and if you're fatigued your libido decreases if your libido decreases there will be no sex and infertility will come about number nine is environmental toxins it's been found out that there are certain chemicals in some industries that do affect sperm production in fact, if you work in an environment, especially where um, printing, in the printing press, I'm giving examples of the kind of industries, in the printing press, in the paint industries, there are some heavy metals that are used in such industries that could affect sperm count. There are also some professions like radiographers and um, radiologists that are exposed to x-rays. X-rays do destroy the sperm. And that's why the radiographer and radiologists do not play with protecting themselves with lead shields so that the x-rays do not come near um, their testes. Radiation or chemotherapy could also affect um, sperm production. Number 10 
is a very common cause of male infertility and it is increasingly becoming a common cause. It's called sexual dysfunction. What do we mean by sexual dysfunction? Erectile dysfunction. Men not having erection. It could be due to psychological problem or it could be due to some pathology. If you suffer from such, it's better you see your gynecologist or your urologist. We have another type of sexual dysfunction called premature ejaculation. All those things one can treat if you see your gynecologist or your urologist or you avail yourself of psychosexual counseling. Number 11 is a disease process called varicocele. Varicocele basically means there are a lot of veins around the testicular region. And when there are a lot of veins in there, that means there is a lot of blood flow around the testes. And when there is a lot of blood flows, it means there is a lot of heat being generated around the testes. It's been found that varicocele, especially men that do have them, could contribute to male infertility by reducing their sperm count. Basically, the main way varicocele works is it, the veins and the excessive blood flow in the testicular region generates too much heat. Number 12 is what we call anti-spam antibodies. They could be generated by men themselves or they could be generated from the woman's cervical mucus. What this anti-spam antibodies does is they attack the sperm. So any sperm that is deposited in the vagina are attacked such that they kill off the sperm and the sperm cannot um, reach the uterus and the fallopian tubes to fertilize the egg. Number 13 is what we call undescended testes. The testes during the developmental um, stages of it being formed from the womb up till the time a child is born. The journey of the testes starts from the abdomen. It starts migrating downwards until at birth when it settles inside the scrotum. Sometimes there are some testes that do not descend into the scrotum. They remain in the abdomen. And like I mentioned earlier on, that's not the normal place for a testes to be because a lot of heat is generated in the pelvis and in the abdomen. So we have some men that have what we call undescended testes. If it is diagnosed early enough in a child, it is important that they see a doctor who can pull down the testes to where it's supposed to be in the scrotum. We're still talking about 15 causes of male infertility. Number 14 is not a very common cause. It's called hormonal imbalance. Sometimes during the investigation, you find out that some men have some imbalanced hormone. Either their testosterone is too low, or sometimes their prolactin is too high, or they have excessive estrogen roaming about in their body. It's not a common cause, but it's part of the investigation that is done to see whenever there's any hormonal imbalance in a man, it's best treated. Finally, number 15, as a cause of male infertility, is chromosomal defect. There are some people that are born that way. They have chromosomal abnormality. Normally, sex chromosome should be XY. That's the normal for a male. And a woman's sex chromosome should be XX. There are some men that are born with three chromosomes and they have what we call XXY. It's called Kleinefelter syndrome. In such men, they have male infertility. So sometimes, if you don't know what's going on, it might be better to check the chromosome of the man and be sure it is not an XXY chromosome is carrying. There's another disease process called cystic fibrosis that cause male infertility. So those are the 15 causes of male infertility. If you want to know more about male infertility, I have written two books that will shed more light on it. Both books are on Amazon. The first one is called 
how to get pregnant and have a baby. The second book is called The Art of Making Babies. It's a patient guide to in vitro fertilization. They are available in Nigeria as well on all our social media pages. You can get them. Or you can go to our website www.stivesheathcare.com. It's available there. Thank you for listening. And I hope you will subscribe, like, and share this video. God bless.